This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazoff Moment. This evening, Islamic sex slavery in California. Ladies and gentlemen, sex slavery, jihad, Sharia, it's all here. It's in Europe. It's in Canada, it's in the United States now, and a lot of denial. Media's not covering this, nobody's saying anything, and especially nobody's telling the truth. And by the way, when I say nobody, of course I don't mean the, the true, the real truth tellers. Of course, the truth tellers are saying stuff. I'm talking about the leftist higher culture, the leftist media, the establishment media, our boundaries of discourse. It's just not allowed to be discussed. So for instance, on MSNBC, on CNN, on New York Times, in New York Times and Washington Post, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get stories about this. And if you even do on page 25 somewhere in some last paragraph somewhere, hidden somewhere, you're not even gonna get any honest reporting about why these things are happening. That's why the Glazov gang is here to tell you. And of course you should be following Jihad Watch and Front Page Magazine and of course also always be watching and following everything Annie Cyrus is doing on Twitter and other social media on Facebook and make sure you're visiting Annie Cyrus on her website Live Up to Freedom. So we're trying to get the truth out there. So look, in California just recently Abdul Basir Hashimi, a Muslim gentleman, was recently found guilty for trafficking a girl since she was 13. And I, I already hear the noises in my head. I already hear the voices in my head. Because whenever we start to discuss this, you have that unholy alliance denial. The unholy alliance between the left and Islamic Jihad and, and with Sharia. And it starts right away. Oh, well, you know, there's, there's pimps. There's pimps in America. There's Christian pimps. There's all kinds of pimps and rapists in America and in the West and white in the West and white people and all this. And, uh, and then when we explain it, it's like we never said anything. And the accusers and the deniers just get back to the same narrative over and over again. You know, whenever you bring up, let's say, rape, as part of Islamic Jihad, you get these people like, well, there's rape in America. Once again, there is crime and there is sin and there is violence everywhere in the human condition, everywhere in human nature, okay? So just like Alexander Solzhenitsyn said that good and evil cut across the human heart in every single human being. So, because of our fallen nature, because of the existence of the devil, because of good and evil, and there's God, and then there's also evil. Evil exists everywhere. So, yes, absolutely. In America, there is violence and murder and whatever, you know, and rape. Everything you would find everywhere else from the beginning of time till now. And, and why also I'm when I say forever, what, what I wanted to say there is that, yeah, human nature will always continue to be what it is. It's just as, as a Christian, there is a next phase after Jesus Christ's return, but that, that's another matter. So human nature is human nature. Once again, what the left is going to put their hands to, their fingers to their ears and pretend they don't hear what I'm about to say, and even when they do hear it, they pretend nothing was ever said and then they just go back to the same mantra over and over again because they cannot accept the truth. They cannot accept the threat that Islamic supremacism poses to the West because they're allied to Islamic supremacism. That's why. Because their, their agenda is to, dis de to destroy this host democratic free society. And so because of that they're allied with our adversarial totalitarian enemies and for many other reasons which I've explained in my works United in Hate and uh, my new book She Had a Psychopath. But here's what I'm going to say now. If people who are quote-unquote Christians, let's say, 
engage in bad things like murder or rape. They are being bad Christians. They are doing those bad things in spite of Christianity, not because of it. There's no verses from the New Testament. There's nothing you can quote Jesus by or with and then go on some kind of rape journey and point to something that Jesus said and use it to sanction what you did. Okay? So Christians that do those bad things are violating Christianity. Okay? So for the millionth time, in terms of what I just reported, in terms of this Abdul Hashimi individual being this pimp, engaging in, in this rape and also sex slavery, we know that in Islam there is divine sanctioning for these things. That's why many of the survivors of Muslim rape gangs in the UK, many of the, the victims of rape and sex slavery under ISIS, they all testify that their rapists and their enslavers would quote the Quran to them, believing that their actions were justified by Islam. Those of you that are interested in the truth, just look up my interview with Gavin Bobby on Muslim rape gangs. He discusses all these things. Gavin Bobby is an expert on this. And, you know, he talks about all these cases in the UK with the Muslim rape gangs. A lot of these rapists are very religious people, Islamically wise, and they pray during the day and they go raping at night and they rape kafirs and infidels. A lot of people watching this, this is too much to bear in our culture. It's much easier to say, oh, what this guy's saying is racist and bigoted and he's an Islamophobe, etc., etc. And, yeah, I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I don't know. It just, there's so much here. Islam is not a race, and a lot of the, the people who actually suffer from all of these Sharia oppressions and horrific abuse are Muslim women and girls themselves. So when we're also standing up for Muslim women and Muslim girls, how we could be racist and haters of Muslim people is beyond me. It just, it all doesn't add up. So this is the key here, that the Quran teaches that infidel and kafir women can be lawfully taken for sexual use, period. Just get the Quran. And uh, there's many references, for instance, to Muslim men who can take, quote-unquote, captives of the right hand. There's an inspiration and sanctioning for sexual slavery under Islam when it comes to kafir and infidel women. So the surahs, for instance, surahs 4.3, surahs 4 to 4, 23 verses 1 to 6, 33, 50, 70, 30. These are all the foundations that inspire and sanction the sexual slavery of Kafir and infidel women under Islam. And that's why ISIS and the Muslim rape gangs in the UK and elsewhere, that's why the perpetrators are constantly pointing to those verses to justify what they do. This is a problem. We're not saying that all Muslim men do this. And we're not trying to even spread hate of any people. We're simply doing what Robert Spencer does at Jihad Watch. He's constantly being targeted, uh, libeled, and, and slandered. All Robert Spencer does is when he shows what jihadists and Sharia enforcers do, he shows the foundations in the texts and how the texts inspire and sanction these terrible things. So, for instance, the Quran 2431 and 3359 mandate hijab. There's a reason why Umar bin al Khattab begged Muhammad to enforce the hijab. Those of you who know about Islamic theology, about Islamic texts, we know what is the origins of the hijab. Well, one of them is that Umar bin al Khattab, at the right hand of Muhammad, was sneaking out into the fields at night to do certain things. He was spying on the women that were using 
the bathroom, quote unquote, back in that time in the fields. And he wanted to know which ones he could do something with and which ones he couldn't. And so he asked Mahab, uh, Muhammad to put hijab on the, on the Muslim, on, on the Muslim women, on the, on the women that were close to Muhammad or following him. And then guess what, what he was going to do to the women that didn't have hijab on after that. So this is why, ladies and gentlemen, Quran 3359 says, quote unquote, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves of their outer garments that is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Read that over and over again until you get it if you don't get it. I'm not being condescending here. It just comes from a certain frustration of constant deniers coming at us. The meaning in that verse, the implication, is that if women do not cover themselves adequately with their quote-unquote outer garments, that they can justifiably be abused and that that abuse is justified. We've discussed this a lot on the Glass Off Gang, ladies and gentlemen. Our culture is in complete denial of this. If this particular case of sex slavery in California is ever mentioned, and it won't be in our establishment media, but I'm waiting for the day when Don Lemon or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maddow will even for a moment get off Russian collusion, just even for maybe 10 seconds, and mention what this particular Muslim individual did to this young girl. I, I kind of thought we cared about human rights and, and women and girls, but I guess not when it doesn't serve the leftist agenda. But it's very important, it's vital to discuss in terms of this particular guy and what he just did in California. What inspired him? What sanctioned him? in terms of where he felt justified. It's very important, but it's taboo now. Why is it taboo? I explain why it's taboo in my new book, She Had a Psychopath. It's coming out soon, pre-order it now. But I discuss this plantation that the jihadist psychopath has built very successfully in our society. And it's controlling our thoughts, it's controlling our minds, what we're allowed to say and we're, what, what we're not allowed to say. And everything I'm saying here tonight will never be discussed by Maddow, Anderson, and Don Lemon and all the rest of that cast because it just doesn't serve their agenda. But if they really cared about women, if they really cared about girls and their protection and their rights, they would talk about this. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that when you deny oppression and the sources of oppression, you enable it. And the left, wow, what an enabler the left is of what happened to that girl in California and the millions of millions of women and girls that she represents. Non-Muslim women, absolutely, but also all the Muslim girls all the Muslim women that suffer from other aspects of Sharia, female genital mutilation and honor killings and forced marriage, we're on their side and the left is on the side of their oppressors and their persecutors. Thank you for taking the time to watch the Jamie Glazoff moment tonight. You will see us and we will see you very soon. Good night.